There's a group called White Dudes for Harris. Have you seen this? White Dudes for Harris. Anybody know? Are, are some of you here? White Dudes for Harris doesn't sound like it. But I'm not worried about them at all because their wives and their wives' lovers are all voting for me. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Mika, and we're back for another Red Cup Talks because you know when we got the Red Cup, we're about to spill some truth. And today, I wanted to come on and talk about the Al Smith dinner last night, the Catholic Church dinner. And last night, when I tell you Trump brought the house down, he is king of the roast. He is king of the roast, okay? Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, Kamala Harris did not make it, all right? But she did send in a video, so we'll play that as well. And then we'll get into the media, the mainstream liberal media going going nuts over what Trump said, like they do with everything, you know, the derangement syndrome trial. But anywho, let's get right into it. Here we go. Tradition holds that I'm supposed to tell a few self-deprecating jokes this evening. So here it goes. <laughs> nope, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. There's nothing to say. It's not my normal crowd. Believe me, my normal crowd is younger, <laughs> has a lot more energy, <laughs> but you have certain advantages too, <laughs> like cash, lots of cash. <laughs> but many of you are Manhattan liberals from the media and the Democrat party. I always say the Democrat, you know, Chuck doesn't like that. He likes Democratic and it sounds much more beautiful. The Democratic party. I always say the Democrat party because it sounds worse. All polls are indicating I'm leading big with the Catholic vote, as I should be, as I should be. But I don't think Kamala has given up yet. She hasn't, instead of attending tonight, she's in Michigan receiving communion from Gretchen Whitmer. <laughs> That's not a pretty sight. The Democrats really wanted to have someone not be with us this evening, they would have just sent Joe Biden. <laughs> you know, he's having second thoughts. You know that, right? He's having, he wants to come back. If she does any worse in the polls, they're going to bring him back again, I think. Chuck, he's going to do it. He's the one that got him out. That's the guy. Much more so than Crazy Nancy, I will tell you. Because I know him. He did it. <laughs> but look on the bright side, Chuck, considering how woke your party has become, if Kamala loses, you still have a chance to become the first woman president. So you just saw highlights of Trump doing a bit of roasting, right? But it wasn't done. Kamala has to do her roasting. Here we go. Your eminence and distinguished guests, the Al Smith dinner provides a rare opportunity to set aside partisanship. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hey, what's going on? Who was that? Oh, sorry, Mary Catherine Elliott. Oh. Mary Catherine Elliott, it's so nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, Mary Catherine. Right now, I'm trying to record my speech for tonight's dinner. Oh, yeah, I know. I just want to say that I'm Catholic, and tonight is one of the biggest dinners next to the Last Supper. It is a very important dinner, and it's an important tradition that I'm so proud to be a part of. Sometimes when I get nervous, I stick my fingers under my arms, and I sim them like that. Mm. But that's gross. So tell me something. Um, I'm giving a speech. Do you have some thoughts about what I might say tonight? My feelings about what you should say tonight would be best expressed in a monologue from one of my favorite made-for-TV series. Okay, let's hear it. Don't you see, man? We need a woman to represent us. A woman brings more heart, more compassion. And think how smart she must be to become a top contender in a field dominated by men. It's time for a woman, bro. And with this woman, we can fly. Thank you, may God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. I don't even know what that noise you're making is. Sorry, like, ah. <laughs> I don't know, as I watched that, it, I couldn't help but think of now I know how my kids felt when I call, I FaceTimed into a piano recital they were at. <laughs> anyway. 
Okay, that was Kamala's video, all right? And when Kamala decided to do all of that, it was cringy to me. It was just cringy. However, I digress. Anyway, the mainstream media decided that they were going to jump into it. And I knew this was going to happen. Here's CNN and what they had to say with their analysis on a dinner. Here you go. Former president and Republican nominee Donald Trump addressing the Al Smith dinner. It, it's a charity event that gives the presidential candidates a chance to do some comedy in the middle of a heated and bitter political year. Donald Trump did get a lot of laughs. He also got some booze. And he used the stage to call Kamala Harris disrespectful for skipping the dinner. And then he cursed from the stage. He praised conspiracy theorist Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who has endorsed him. He tried to flip the word weird against Democrats, and he made a transgender joke about Chuck Schumer, who was sit sitting right next to him. He joked about Doug Emhoff's infidelity in his first marriage. He wink winked at the assassination attempts against him and much much more good thing we've got our round table here to break it down uh before her you know also ever encompassing all knowing round table breaks it down i want to address just some of that that she just said there okay conspiracy theorists <laughs> robert f kennedy okay anytime they don't like what somebody says it's a conspiracy theory and then they turn around and make their own conspiracy theories Shocker. And then she, you know, she had the nerve to say he used the he used the night to disrespect. It's a roast, ma'am. That's what it's supposed to be. A roast is disrespectful. And you say things that you normally wouldn't say in the spirit of jokes. What don't they get about this? They act like they don't have no sense of humor. Oh, wait, they don't. And neither does their candidate. Um, Brian Stelter, what did you make of this performance? Oh, no, don't ask me first. <laughs> I thought he was funny. I thought he actually got a few great jokes in. I thought the best moment was we talked about the assassination attempts and made light of what he's experienced because I think he's experiencing real trauma, real PTSD as a result of the shootings, but he's still able to have a, a light moment in, in, in this room. And he took advantage of the fact that Kamala Harris wasn't there. Which is really the subtext that he of this kept, whole thing. Exactly. That, that she They're usually the supposed to be in the same room. Which it is, is frustrating, funny. though, that he will not pronounce her name correctly. It's not difficult. And he goes out of his way to insult her in a way that I think is racially tipped. So the whole name thing gets on my last nerve, okay? People mess up people's names. But you guys go out of your way to call him the orange man. Some of y'all won't even call him Donald Trump. You just say that guy or this man or he. Like you use other pronouns instead of the man's name. So miss me with the whole, oh, he goes out of his way. Half of y'all don't even say the man's name. He was the president. Kamala Harris, Kamala, sorry, has been the vice president and a senator and an awful prosecutor. She has never been president of the United States. And yet, you still don't respect this man. So miss me with the disrespect. The fact that she's not there, Bamani, smart move, not so smart move. I mean, she put out this video in it and actually they brought in like a real comedian to do the bit with her. Um, but she could have done exactly what Trump did and roast him and roast from the him. stage. Yes, but let us stop and imagine the moment where this dude makes jokes about your husband's infidelity with his first wife, and you're just sitting there like, oh, man, that was hilarious. Well, you know no. what? I, I have to say, uh, if you were watching, the, Jim Gaffigan, who was on right before Trump, yes. made a joke about uh, grab them by their you-know-what yes. with Melania Trump sitting right there. Yeah. Yeah. She was not amused. Well, I mean, the audacity of Trump to decide, yeah. like, you would, you would think some game-recognized game would come up at that point. You're like, nah, I think we're going <laughs> to leave that joke out of here. I don't feel like I'm the person who could tell this. But I can, it is difficult for me to listen to him. It's supposed to be, self, you know, self-deprecating. Like, you're, you're, you're able to talk about yourself. So I'm not understanding why he can't make that joke. And it's not his fault that Doug doesn't know how to keep it at home. Y'all are mad that there is a scandal there. You guys are mad. Like, it is what it is. You guys can use a soundbite and make Trump a whole artist. 
you know what I mean by artist. You can make him a whole artist, but you won't talk about Doug and him beating his ex-girlfriend. Like he literally beat that girl. Right. And they showed uh, text messages. They showed emails. And you won't talk about the fact that, yeah, he is not only a cheater. He got a whole nother woman pregnant who happened to be the nanny. Hide your kids, hide your wives, hide everybody around Doug. Joke right now because nothing feels funny. I could understand, like, if I would, if I were Kamala Harris, the signal I would want to give is, no, I really don't feel like sitting around and joking with this dude right now because I don't think he presents a lot to joke about at this point. I also think that that event, it used to be a good-natured, humored way to kind of take some levity into the campaign season. But I don't think it's like that anymore. And that would really be from the... Like, the feminist, the, it just, like, oh... You see it in her eyeballs. It's Trump derangement with feminist derangement <laughs> with everything else. Golly. From the 2016 event with Hillary Clinton, where Donald Trump changed the whole tone of that event by attacking Hillary Clinton in that particular event. So I feel like he's. So she said that Donald Trump changed the tone of the event by attacking Hillary Clinton. Ma'am, it's a roast. Like. They are, they, they, I want to use a certain word. I swear to goodness. These people are touched. That's what I'm going to call it. You're touched, ma'am. Okay. You're very touched because this is what Hillary Clinton did at the same event. Let's roll the footage. There are a lot of friendly faces here in this room, people that I've been privileged to know and to work with. I just want to put you all in a basket of adorables. <laughs> And you look so good in your tuxes, or as I refer to them, formal pantsuits. <laughs> and, you know, because this is a friendly dinner for such a great cause, Donald, if at any time you don't like what I'm saying, feel free to stand up and shout wrong while I'm talking. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, it's amazing I'm up here after Donald. I didn't think he'd be okay with a peaceful transition of power. <laughs> and Donald, after listening to your speech, I will also enjoy listening to Mike Pence deny that you ever gave it. But remember, if you're not happy with the way it comes out, it must be rigged. <laughs> and it's always, a special treat for me to be back in New York, a city that I love and which I think truly embodies the best of America. You know, don't you think? <laughs> People look at the Statue of Liberty and they see a proud symbol of our history as a nation of immigrants, a beacon of hope for people around the world. Donald looks at the Statue of Liberty and sees a four. <laughs> Maybe a five if she loses the torch and tablet and changes her hair. All right, so you just saw what Hillary Clinton did in 2016 when she attended a dinner with who? Donald Trump. So she was able to do something that Kamala cannot do, apparently. And she was actually pretty funny, okay? She did the baskets of deplorables, calling them baskets of adorables in the room. You know, it was a play off of her scandal with the baskets of deplorables and people saying that she called uh, just American citizens deplorable, right? And it's debatable depending on how you feel, but at the end of the day, you know, that was a disrespectful comment. So she did a bit off of that comment and nobody batted an eye. The media didn't go in on it. They actually thought it was pretty funny, too. So I'm just, you know, surprised at all of the hoopla around it because Donald Trump even laughed. So at the end of the day, it's just because it's Donald Trump. The Trump derangement syndrome is real. OK, it's it's so real. And CNN, I, I swear, it has it the most. But let's go ahead and finish.
he's the one that kind of changed the tone of that to begin with. And then it's a Catholic event where Kamala Harris is running very distinctly on returning the rights of Roe to people. And this is a group that really, really loves that those rights were taken from women in the country. So it feels like, you know what, she only started her campaign in July. He's been running for president since he was inaugurated in 2017. So he can take a break to make some jokes. She's working. It's more uh, expedient for me to be in Wisconsin, a state where she may or may not win. For Trump, I think it's important because a larger percent of Catholics don't vote. They're infrequent voters. So if he can turn out four or five percent of those voters in some of those swing states, that may make a difference for him in November. Right. But sure, Michael, this was not an event for evangelical Christians. This is an event for Catholics. Biden won the Catholic vote in 2020 and Trump won the Catholic vote in 2016. So it is an immensely important population, especially in states like Pennsylvania, um, huge Catholic population, huge ethnic Catholic population um, who respond to cultural Catholic things like talking about Catholic schools. That is an enormous, I am Catholic. It is, the, it is a very, very deep part of our culture is our Catholic schools. They're constantly under budgetary issues and a lot are closing. This was a perfect time. She could have had a lot of smooth things and no one would have noticed if she may have gone, but people noticed that she wasn't there. I thought he had some great one-liners. The, the line about, you know, he was, he was talking, you know, like, now I'm going to forget them all, of course, on live TV. The Eric Adams but, joke was very funny. The, the, yeah, that was There were good. a couple of Eric Adams. There were a couple of jokes that were really good. I want our politicians to roast each other. I want them to be able yeah. to be in the same room and find common ground. But I, I think to, but to, it's Lee's, hard right to now. Lee's point, uh, it, it does kind of strike me that the Harris campaign is sort of tacitly saying, hey, this, this ain't Normal. The last I thing I would want if I were Kamala Harris and Trump managed to win this election is that you got a bunch of video with me after the fact, kicking it up with Donald Trump. when we have no idea what this man is capable of if he winds up winning this again. Like, I don't want I would not want the per to be the person immortalized in that way. OK, there you have it. Trump derangement syndrome on point on display. Look, CNN, they're not going to let it go. OK, they're going to keep doing this before, during, and after the election, okay? And I'm telling you, it's probably going to be even worse because they're going to find all reasons, all reasons, all reasons to come up with something of why she lost because she's losing in the biggest key state. So maybe it is important for her to be there, okay? Because she is right now losing big in early voting. And in Michigan, it's neck and neck. So maybe it is a good thing. Maybe not. I don't know. But she should have went to that dinner. She has an airplane, Air Force Two, where they're going to just fly her around anyway. OK, so she could have went to the dinner and flew right to her next destination. But she didn't want to do it because she can not deliver. That video was a travesty. It sucked. It was cringy. So, yeah, maybe she didn't want to see that response in person. Do you think CNN is right on point with their Trump derangement syndrome and that she shouldn't have gone and she can't be kiki with them and she can't, you know, make him normal? Or do you think these people are just nuts? OK, and it's just a dinner to show, you know, good faith to be able to sit down with your arch enemy. I mean, even enemies broke bread. I would have went. But. That's just me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, comment, and subscribe. And one of my videos, go ahead and watch them. They're somewhere in here. But again, like, comment, and subscribe. You can support the channel. Officially Mika at Cash App. And you can always support the channel down in the comments with a super thanks. As always, thank you for watching. Peace.